midway through the 2021 NXL season, and the pro teams are at a crossroads. Next on everyone's hit list, the NXL Windy City Major. That's what it's all about, boys. Let's do it for each other. For the current four teams at the top, Edmonton Impact, Russian Legion, Los Angeles Infamous, and Houston Heat, this is the chance to solidify their status during the push to the series title and continue to stay favorites for the coveted World Cup trophy. So far in 2021, Edmonton Impact has again been the pinnacle of roster strength and consistency, winning the first event and taking second at the Mid-Atlantic Open. But it was Houston Heat who rose to the occasion to take the victory at the last event after a frustrating first tournament where the three-time world champs missed Sunday in Florida for the first time in years. They have not seen the complete package here yet. Keep the Russian Legion has found a way to stay relevant, even though they are running a tight six-man roster that still isn't at full pre-pandemic power. If this has been exhibiting brutal but refined aggression, it will continue to be a favorite moving forward. But no one should sleep on the scrappy squads of AC Diesel and Seattle Thunder, who are earning respect this year and could factor into the finals mix at the last events of the NXL Pro season. And our defending world champs, Dynasty, showed grit and gumption with their injury depleted roster, still managing a third place finish in Philly. Zenigo Aftermath and Tampa Bay Damage could be in the hunt on Sunday as well. Aftermath has only improved this year, but Damage, after taking third in Florida, got knocked out in the last event on Saturday. We can't forget about San Antonio X Factor, who should be hungry to win after taking a disappointing seventh and ninth place. Will the best teams continue to shine, or will a new team rise up and make history? Paintball at its highest level has never been this competitive, with this many teams with a chance to win an event. Watch all the gunfights going down on center stage at the NXL Windy City Major, September 17th to the 19th, only on GoSports.com. Welcome to Go Sports Live. I'm Maddie Marshall, and I have a Dimitri Meter Ninios here for today's episode. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Meter's been around the block. He's played for lots of legendary squads. Uh, he's a world champion. He's an all-star. We got a kind of a – there's a lot to unpack and a lot to go over here in this conversation. Just started a new brand called Astra. Had the Astra Invitational, and we have the uh, next event here just right around the corner, the uh, NXL Windy City Open. Um, so let's – but kind of before, I just want to remind everybody, as I like to do, Meter, to let everyone know how long you've been doing this. It, there's some people that are new here, some people that aren't familiar with your career. We've had you on the show before. You've gone down the rabbit hole on, on your illustrious and lengthy career, even though you're only 27 years old. But that being said, I kind of want to go, if we could just reel it back a little bit before we dive into the present and kind of talk about some of these lessons that you've learned along the way. But before we kind of get into that, first of all, how are you doing here? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, we're still in this COVID uncertainty, but everything's great on my end. Uh, very fortunate to that. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Doing good, man. Got the kid, uh, having a kid and moving into a house during COVID while trying to do all this paintball stuff and travel across the you know country has been a wild, crazy ride for the past year and a half. But the kid is happy and healthy and chunky and his year uh, birthday is coming up here. So been able to play a little paintball this year too awesome. with some 10 mans. Life is great. Life's great, dude. Uh, I am looking forward to, I mean, we obviously got a lot of paintball stuff to cover, but you know, I remember when I first met you when I was living with Ryan and I rolled in, they're like, oh, you know, Meter. I'm like, yeah, I've heard about Meter. Here's pretty bright kid. And then you were sitting on the couch, we roll and we just launch into like a four hour long badass conversation about books and all sorts of intellectual <laughs> yeah. stuff. So I'm looking forward to a, a conversation like that over beers uh, in the near future, hopefully with you. We can talk about, obviously, we you know, have we go to. down some rabbit holes today too. We got to, but we got to do that because I, I definitely, I think we're due for one of those. Um, but yeah, dude, life's, mm -hmm. life is really good, man. I'd really enjoy the hell out of my job and I'm really excited, legitimately excited about, you know, the event coming up. I love watching paintball and love talking about paintball. So, um, but yeah, so kind of going off that a little bit, that's kind of when I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, got meter coming on the show. We got to talk about his new company, the event that just went down, interested in all that stuff. But I was thinking, man, I was like, it would be a really good time because you are a cerebral paintball player. And I do want to talk about that as that being a part of you as a player, because I, I you know, I, we'll get into that a little bit later on down the line here in the episode, mm -hmm. because I do think that you coming to terms with who you are in your journey has made you this spectacular, you know, a player uh, in this current incarnation of your game. So I want to touch base on that because I think a lot of times you have these 
cerebral, smarter guys that come up to play the game and second guess themselves or lean on their ego too much. It's like trying to ride that fine line between, you know, believing in yourself and listening to others, which is kind of mm -hmm. doesn't always go together sometimes, but you have to do that. So I do want to touch <laughs> base on that. But that being said, you know, if we could just kind of go back on, on some of these teams that you've played on. And I thought maybe if you could just pick like one lesson, you know, we can kind of play this yeah. game however you want to play it. But I was thinking that because you have been on so many different adventures with different teams, sometimes multiple pro teams in one year with all these different coaches and different <laughs> all-stars and like all this, this it's a bit of crazy ride. And if you, we have, I think yeah. we have the episode in the archives, you can go back and listen to the whole story. But so we get to maybe just start in the beginning at least as it, it is on APPA, you know, we, or maybe it, it, you tell me if we should go before this, but if we can go all the way back to kind of <laughs> your first, you know, 2007 to 2008 to 2009, wow. when you were really starting yeah. to make a name for yourself, you know, so like take me back to a fresh boot rookie meter right out the gate, teenager here, <laughs> you know, a little babe wandering mm -hmm. in the woods in the world. And, but that being said, you obviously had, some sort of dream of this future that you've now painted for yourself. So if you could go back and, and maybe, you know, your current incarnation, your 27 year old self, go back and talk to that mm -hmm. meter. If we could play the game, maybe that way and give the lessons, yeah. like, what would be one the, the first lesson you think from the start of the adventure leading into when you really ramped up and started, you know, it got to the gestures and moved to Carolina and, you know, what would that lesson be? You think if we started at the beginning, man, belief i mean it's such an easy uh you know you walk into a pottery barn on the wall thing to say but belief is 100 percent uh a major lesson to i mean where it started if i could go back and tell myself something it'd say it would absolutely be it'll all happen for you you know um everything you're you're taking in everything you're seeing the pain the the passion you feel watching these damn dvds and vhs tapes of paintball over and over again like you know it will all happen and that uh i don't know if there was doubt because i was very consumed by that but it's cool to look back yeah if i could just say what up to younger meter dude it's gonna be cool you're gonna play with everyone you think uh you're gonna be able to do all these things even if it's in, in an unorthodox way you're gonna do it um so that's cool to look back and despite you know the rough edges or whatever timelines it, it i've been able to do a lot of things that i wanted to go do at, from a fan of paintball um so that's pretty exciting um yeah lessons so i don't again i don't i don't i was i don't I, so i can't writing these down lesson one old meter to, to young mm -hmm. meter is is belief you know believe in your quest essentially that you will get to the place that you want to get to I, and i kind of like that as you know starting out the gate if you could appear and say, yeah, just believe in yourself because a young guy, it's you can't really lay too much else on somebody else, somebody that's young because one, they probably won't listen to you. And two, you don't want to feed them too much. You just want to kind of get them yeah. like stoked on the fact that they're willing to, to run into the breach and learn the lessons along the way. So lesson one is belief. I like yeah, that. So if we sure. can take it then. So we sure. go, so we go from again, because when you go back and you look at all these teams that you you played with before you kind of got on like a team that somebody might know, unless you're from that area, but it was like Texas Smoking Guns, mm -hmm. Urban Groove, HK Nation, Texas Select, the yeah. Montreal Make Star, Raiden. That doesn't you know, Raiden, sound like the uh the pro, you know, D1 or like number one pick overall like history, you know. It's like I went through it for sure. HK throw together HK team, uh you know the urban groove those are definitely the texas texas select that's where tj and ash and i actually got to play on like a formative team together but no absolutely very colorful background so like that rule number one or lesson the belief if you don't have that as your foundation how the hell are you going to navigate all these other you know weird situations you're in there's no pipeline to get your you know at the time there wasn't now you got bki and awesome things um that will make people who are specialists at what they want to go do more accessible but back in the day all you had was belief or at least that's what i hope you had yeah no i think that's i'm just i'm gonna be lighting i'm gonna write i'm literally writing all these down so that we can kind of go over it when okay. we get done so because yeah. then i think that you know heading into what i would consider and if you feel that 
we should cut off certain time periods at other time period, you know, at, at a, another arbitrary date, let me know. But just when I was kind of going through these, yeah. I feel that, you know, because I'm trying to make this anytime we do shows like this and we get a chance to touch base with guys like yourself, I'm, you know, always thinking, OK, if somebody's consuming this as a piece of content, you, you know, OK, we've given you some content. What do people get out of it? Right. And when we do get people in the seat, it's I just feel that there there are lessons to be learned along the way in kind of in this retrospective, you know, kind of look back at these things. And so, you know, if we do need to change it based on, again, you know, uh, timelines, you just let me know. But I feel that the very beginning mm -hmm. is kind of the beginning. And when anyone starts out on this quest, you don't know what the hell is going to happen or who you're going to be ended up riding with. Like you, you go to a birthday party or you, you see something, you want to go play paintball, you go play paintball. And then you start meeting people and maybe they seem cool at the time. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're trying to fleece you your money. Who knows? You never know. Maybe they're the, maybe those are your ride and dies right out the gate. There are some of those stories. Maybe they're your family. <laughs> you don't get to there's pick. So many different, <laughs> yeah, there's so many different variations yeah. of this. But then, so I so I feel like you're out, you know, you have, we're all these different teams, but I feel like right around maybe 2010-ish when you got mm -hmm. with the Jesters, because you were with the Jesters for at least long enough that, it wasn't like a one hit or quitter type situation. Would you agree? Do you feel that was kind of mm -hmm. like you may be moving at, from step one to step two or maybe step zero to step one? For sure. Um, definitely step. Well, well, yeah, my first step was kind of crazy because I, I would say first step was getting on Raiden, uh, you know, really a nobody um, getting on to a division one uh a nobody who felt like he was the body <laughs> and uh i got on a division one team as a younger really enthusiastic 14 15 year old kid and then we went on to win world cup and then the team uh just disbanded uh as semi-pro teams getting to that pro spot do and step two was definitely my time in new jersey jesters you know that was uh probably the more important step than step one um and it, that more definitely important, what propelled more important me. Why? So, what do you think would be uh, then the takeaway, the lesson from that step two with with that squad? Yeah, the step two for the jesters was you know going over there and doing it again, winning another tournament. I guess I'm saying uh, winning another wow. Division One tournament. Um, we kind of Matt Sossman and I we kind of found a home with the jesters, and they showed me a whole other side of paintball as far as like the brotherhood side and uh, fraternity feel that I definitely didn't have growing up. We were just a bunch of kids who liked shooting each other. So that's what we did. The gesture thing uh, gave a little more legitimacy to it for me. Um, and that lesson was kind of the keep going part of the journey. You know, if you keep pushing, cause I'm fighting to keep my name, I'm fighting to keep uh, the opportunities coming my way. Uh, and we are able to do that. So, keep going <laughs> is that uh the lesson there well i think it's interesting though because and I, these are your lessons so i'm not but i i kind of wouldn't be doing my job if mm -hmm. i didn't at least kind of ask questions here or there but i feel yeah so you, the lesson would be you know persistence keep going but the first thing that you started to describe as far as the almost the archetype like the emotional archetype that defined that era for you was brotherhood you know, which almost could be a lesson yeah. in and of itself, because you're going to have different incarnations of that as you move forward. Um, but again, I, you know, I, so I, I was just kind of, I'm just writing down what's coming out of your mouth. I like brotherhood. I just want to say like brotherhood. Yeah. Cross it out. We're, that, we're producing it. Let, yeah. Cross that out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. It's, I, I just think that it was you, that was like literally the first thing that came to your mind. You're like, yeah, it was like a brotherhood. I yeah. didn't have that kind of coming up. And, but that's also such a, you know, again, belief to start out with and then brotherhood. Those are such fundamental parts mm -hmm. of this, you know, the gifts of the game, as we like to say. And uh, and when you do stop playing eventually, whether that's choice or injury or or just take breaks or whatever, a lot of things that the people miss. I mean, hell, like the veteran militia, I love what they're doing. That whole thing exists because of the brotherhood, you know, because when people go into the yeah. service and then they get out, they don't have that, even though they're, you know, not necessarily spending every single day risking their lives. Maybe they become cops or firefighters or whatever. Maybe they're still risking their lives. But. They don't have that brotherhood. And I think that, you know, belief is a big part of this thing because you have to have belief to do this treacherous thing mm -hmm. that's called paintball, which you lose a lot more than you win. And it's really hard. And then I think brotherhood keep going is still, I think, a good little, you know, uh, little cosign on the brotherhood we can, part. We, I, we, we have another time period that will maybe more fitting, but 
for keep going. That's good. what I'm saying. Cause like I'm looking at what we got yeah. coming up here. I'm like, man. And again, I don't want to eat up all of our time going down the history, but I just, you know, I just wanted mm-hmm. to, I just felt that this would be a good time to touch base with you on some of these lessons. Um, because it's yeah, just, it's it. just, you've had such an amazing story. So, uh, okay. So, so then we, so it, you get success early on, which, you know, talk about how belief Jesus Christ, you know, you win a world cup with Raiden, uh, win another event with the Jesters. This is in D one. So real quick and, you know, 2010. So, I mean, you're still just super young in this situation and, and pretty fresh into your paintball career. And then maybe you could kind of tell me where you feel, this next chapter maybe starts and ends uh, seeing as that you, know, you did kind of touch base with X factor uh, D two there after the Raiden situation. But then I know you made the move to Carolina and then started the whole gestures mm-hmm. and you were with the gestures for a little bit of time up until essentially, you know, the end of 2011, which I think is, that's probably then when I met you, I think I met you in 2012 um, as a very, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. Strong wilder and intelligent young man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah i think the next step would probably be um texas storm because I, I played well for the jesters but then i can't was able to come home and play uh locally in texas again for the first time in years so that was that was definitely another addition and i really can't even I wouldn't even be here today if that year didn't happen to me and my intersection with Greg Pauly uh, didn't happen. I mean, I wouldn't, I would not be here today if that didn't happen. So that's like a major, uh, or I'm, maybe I wouldn't be the player that I am today without Greg Pauly. So Texas Storm, um, having mentorship uh, in a guy who was dedicated as dedicated as I was to getting better at what we do, um, playing paintball and yeah that that gave me the tr- the training wheels were able to come off to go pro w- with greg you know so what that lesson would be i don't even know i d- i just can't let that one go without uh you know giving credit and appreciation well do you think that maybe then again we're just like you said we're producing this we're just talking through this but i mean do you think that that lesson might be you know, maintain your internal edge, but let the outside wisdom seep in or something along that line. The wisdom, these lessons don't have to be a one word cliche, but you know what I'm saying? Like, again, we're, it, yeah. this is another thing I feel like, cause people are like, and I, dude, I got a shit ton of books behind me and there are definitely some self-help books up <laughs> here, but I feel like once you read a couple self-help books, they say a lot of the same stuff, just in different verbiage throughout time, Absolutely. I mean, going all the way back to how to win friends and influence people, which is down there but then you get to some other ones and then, you know, they, they can and anyway, but it's like, you read a lot of that stuff and it's kind of the same sort of thing. But that being said, you have to in, maintain that internal edge. I feel like people are in too much mm-hmm. of a rush sometimes to try to, you know, like I think belief is great to start out and then brotherhood slash keep going for that one. But, you know, once you kind of, you know, it's like the Dunning Kruger effect. Once you start to learn a decent amount about your situation, you realize there's a intricate levels to things and, you know, just because you know a little bit about something doesn't make you a master. So the fact that you got to that part of your game and then kind of let that again, this is your this is your story. But we've had this talk before. So I just feel like I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Do you feel like that's a good lesson for kind of that specific? part? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, I love that. Yeah, especially the more you learn about your situation, the more not cliche things, but the more labeling and more things that you understand or like not labeling, but you know, common themes of lessons, they, every, I guess things start mattering less because you know your scenario so well, and now you're just moving and you're just trying to do it. The distractions are gone. You're doing what you are trying to go do. Um, so how do you do that? Maintain your internal edge and seek out mentorship. Yeah. I just think that that's such a crucial part to anyone's development, but, and then because that paid so many dividends for you, I know it was, and this is a hard road oh, yeah. for anyone. And, and you've talked a little bit about this before, but just before we kind of move on mm-hmm. is that because I think this is such a fundamental stage in, in a lot of people's growth is that when you do, if you are say the, the poly, you know, if you're Greg Polly and you have a, you know, a very intelligent, but yet precocious, 
and, uh, you know, willful protege that you're dealing with, you know, but it's like, so you see the promise in them and you're, and you're trying to work with that person, you know, sometimes it's hard, man, you know, on both sides, you know, if, because if you're the young guy, Absolutely. you know, and you're trying to, you know, seek out your mentors, but there's a push and a pull there. This is not just, you know, this is not a master slave relationship here, man. This is a, you know, we're mm -hmm. in this learning environment together. Obviously, you know, the person that's the mentor knows more than the person who is absorbing that information. But that person coming up, sometimes it has maybe another way of looking at things. It's just, it's, it, 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 it and that's that, that razor's edge of being able to, it kind of then bleeding over to the lesson before, you know, or this less current lesson we're talking about where you have to maintain your internal edge, but at the same time, let the outside seep in so that you can, you know, make that edge more robust and stronger and able to cut a lot more efficiently yeah. and also be able to, yeah, when, you know, when to you use the edge, you know, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. When to use the edge yeah. and, and also to make it more, because it's like, dude, I, I don't know if you ever seen forge and fire. It's a great show. I don't, it's, it's, about I, have, like a, I yeah. have, yeah. So, but it's interesting because, you know, they, they talk intricately about what steel is and how, you know, the mole you get the molecules to dance and, you know, and then you take these elements and put them together and make them stronger through beating the shit out of them and, incre and, and putting them, you know, under a, in, an intense amount of heat and stress. And that's what makes it stronger. But, and, and the way that then there's different edges you can put on a blade, but I almost feel that if you're, you know, like in your situation, going into the fire that you consciously put yourself in and that these guys subjected you to, especially being from Texas, but you know, when you're under you know, Texas storm, the AC program, then all the, all the guys you basically worked with, you know, they put you through the cauldron, the crucible, and, and they didn't put a fine edge on that. You know, a fine edge can be incredibly sharp, but it's not going to cut for long. It's not going to be very durable. And mm -hmm. as somebody that's, you know, that's consciously deciding to put an edge on something, you know, if you're a blacksmith and you have that piece of metal, that's a conscious decision that you make. What edge am I going to put on this? What job does it have to do? You know, if I just have to take pieces of paper and, and cut pieces of paper, I mean, you can put an incredibly fine edge on that. But if you have to hack through another piece of iron, you got to cut through armor, you know, or spend a long time hacking wood, then you need, that edge needs to be a lot more robust, still needs to be incredibly sharp, but you need to fill that thing out. And I feel like the more that you expose yourself to stress and pressure in those different quests that you went on, I feel like, and again, mm -hmm. this is all everyone out there listening, like this is, we're having this conversation <laughs> for a point because when we get to the point where, you know, X factors as badass as they are, and you, you've gotten your skills to where they've gotten to, like that was, that was a, not an easy quest to go on, you know, for you to get to that point no. and for the people that you worked with. So the fact that you were able to do that, people were able to work with you, you know, it, it did produce a very robust edge that can, you know, whack the shit out of some things and, and maintain its sharpness. Um, but so if you had any, again, any advice to anyone that's, that would, that's you, you know, coming up the ranks right now, you know, incredibly intelligent, but also unrefined, you know, need some work, but maybe you don't know that yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what yeah. type of blade you can put on your weapon yet. What advice would you give to these, these people coming up? Uh, listen to all advice, but it doesn't mean you got to take it. You know, <laughs> I think the biggest mm -hmm. thing is listening to the advice. If you are a person similar to me and there's a difference in, and the difference is perspective on ego or knowledgeable on what you're doing. Um, it doesn't hurt to listen to advice. I don't like taking that much advice myself just because it's not, uh, you know, if you're advising me, you're, you're not me. You're telling me how I should do something. And I, I don't, I don't, I'm not big into that, but there's a difference in being, if you're doing something wrong, someone's advising you, then you should listen to what they have to say. And then you can make your decision. Was that some good advice? Was that some bad advice? I found myself attacking or being, I just didn't interpret a lot of different things well, but I, sh you know, just listening to it, sitting with it, you can do anything with that. That's in your arsenal now. You don't have to bite at everything that comes, uh, comes your way. And if I learned that lesson earlier, I probably would have just been out of a lot more uh, dramatic situations on and off the field. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you on the field the play as much story, paintball though. as you can it's easy it's, it's as easy as that just play as much paintball as you can so then kind of heading forward you know you obviously with the ac camp um and then you head 
into, and I don't know, you, you tell me kind of where we need to split up these lessons, but you know, then you go mm -hmm. to X factor, then you go to infamous, you go back to X factor, back to AC Dallas. And this is where I was kind of looking at this back to infamous. And I'm like, man, I don't even know where to split this up because you went on all these kind of adventures with all these top level teams trying to find your home and, and find your spot. You know, the Ironman's coming up too. I mean, we haven't got there yet. And then you head yeah. you know, to Chicago aftershock for a little bit. You've played overseas a bit. I mean, you've, you know, you, you've definitely, mm -hmm. I mean, you've played 10 man. I mean, you've been around, you've played for a lot of legendary squads. So I'm just kind of wondering, you know, so you started out with belief lesson two is brotherhood kind of realizing what this game offers and then, you know, kind of keep going and then the, let the, you know, let the, keep your internal edge, but let the lessons from the outside resonate. But where do you think that next chapter mm -hmm. of your adventure kind of starts? And then, because I truly feel that at least let me add, cause I've watched mostly your whole pro career and seen pretty much every point you yeah. ever played on that, that main field to me, once you came back to aftershock, uh, I believe 2018 and, and then a couple tournament, it just it took a couple tournaments, but you grooved in really well. And I felt that you, you know, that, I mean, I could go man for man and talk about the importance of each one of the guys on that roster during that championship run. But I truly feel that your game then blossomed into what we all hoped and thought it would be. And when I say we, I mean like yeah. all the guys that I've talked to about you and your game throughout the years. And uh, because, you know, you are a gigantic weapon for X Factor, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Again, we had Ryan Brand on the show recently, but since Astra happened, we had to get you on to talk about that, which we'll get to in a second. But, you know, I have to ask, you know, I ask you about X Factor's current plight, you know, mid midway through the season. Yeah. But you, but your personal game, though, before we get to that, your personal game, mm -hmm. to me, the last kind of part of the, of the puzzle piece that inserted in was that then the next incarnation with X Factor? So do you feel it was kind of all one journey or one kind of chapter with all those different bouncing around to all those different teams? Or do you would you split that up at all? Two chapters. Two? <laughs> I would okay. definitely put two chapters. 2015. Um, and this has come through a lot of reflection and a lot of thinking about it. Uh, all my paintball up until 2015 i was very passion driven uh that that was it i could i could go anywhere with that i felt uh but then when the passions no like whatever happens and the passion's gone then where does it take you what takes you anywhere what is your fuel what is your motivation blah 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 um so I don't even care to get into what happened in 2015 because it wasn't even a team thing it was more it was a bigger paintball what are we doing type <laughs> type thing i saw how fragile things were and that that hit me struck a chord with me for whatever reason for whatever reason um so i'd say the second chapter really starts there's an interlude but then like when i come back to x factor i i realized and the aftershock thing aftershock i'd absolutely realize what uh what i'm gonna take from the game what it's gonna serve me and you know vice versa what i'll serve it and it's i love the competition i'm passionate about the competition i'm passionate about the benefits i i get from the sport i'm passionate about the benefits that i can give back to the sport tying into astra tying into all those different things but the first come first serve is my passion uh finding a different fuel i guess um, and that definitely came about in 2018 after the Ironman uh, spout because I just didn't I just felt like the wheels were turning, but I wasn't really um, playing with purpose or playing with intention. Um, and I didn't even know where to find that intention, what that intention means. And I think that may be a problem for a lot of players in our sport where they just don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it for. F just find it. Find what that is. There's not a wrong answer. But you see a lot of people have frustrations and I identify that with you just not understanding what you necessarily want from the game or what fuels you, you know, you see fuel by hate, you see all the other things from yesteryear's uh, uh, thing. And th that's great. If that's the thing that gets you going, hell yeah. But it's not as easy for some people. Some people you got to find 
what keeps you coming back? Maddie, what keeps you coming back as a, a patron of our sport, a voice of our sport? What is it that you find well, that's changed for you? It's kind of funny because I wrote down, you know, so as I'm going through these, I was just listening to you talk and I was the thing that really stuck out to me is at first I put, you know, replace passion and I was kind of waiting for there to be a specific thing to put into that. But then as the more you talked, it was mm -hmm. more then I crossed out replace and I put uh, find a more sustainable fuel for your passion because mm -hmm. passions evolve. We all evolve as people, man. I mean, if you look into you know, the most recent neuroscience findings, which again, this is kind of bleeding into a meter Maddie beer conversation, Perfect. which we could have for four hours. Yeah. Welcome. But, uh, welcome internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome internet to, uh, Maddie and meter just bullshit and talking over some beers at a bar, but no, I, well, you know, I would this in that moment, I would be bringing up. I'm like, dude, have you mm -hmm. seen some of the new findings in the neuroscience and like what they're, you know, we're talking about like the, and I've, I've mentioned this a few times on our shows before, but if you really look at, at what and how the human brain evolves over time, and how it's motivated um, and how it talks to each other, the different parts of the brain and what those parts of the brain are responsible for. It's so fascinating because it totally explains why when you're 18, you're just so riled up and emotional about things and kind of tunnel vision on a lot of stuff. And obviously that has to do with hormones, but a lot of it does also have to do with the fact of, that your limbic brain is kind of more in control of, of your actions, you know, and then there's, yeah. And again, I'm trying to put a lot into a little bit here because it's not you and me at the bar and we're doing a show, but, but essentially, you know, I it's know. like having the limbo, the limbic brain talk to, which is that you're more like older reptilian side of your brain that is responsible for your decisions. Talk to your specifically mm -hmm. like your dorsal lateral neocortex, which is where you're kind of the rational side of you lies. But so that's why I wrote down, you know, find a more sustainable fuel for your passion. And so for me, you know, you're asking that question to me. Um, to avoid this being a five hour conversation, but you know, it's, yeah, man. I mean, I, I love this game. I've always loved this game. I dreamt about paintball before I played it. When I grew up on a Canyon, we shot BB guns at each other. I, you know, and played war down in the Canyon and, you know, did all that crazy stuff. And then when I found out, found when I, when I found paintball at 15 years old, I was like, felt like I was made to do this. And then immediately started playing for a pro team at 16 and then start traveling around the world. And, uh, and it was, a, it was a really fun adventure. And then I got to be into my late twenties and I was well known as a player and won world championships and got to be on all these rad teams and go on this like wild ride. And I was like, well, what the hell do I do next? And I'd been, you know, doing the television shows since 2003 and this is late two thousands. And to me, what then, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, you know, because I realized that most of this, awesomest the most amazing moves i ever pulled off the, on, on, and my whole generation of players exists in our yep. memories and our memories alone and in the in the, the dude you played against that's it yep like i've seen shit that like lasoy has done that dude the all he did like i mean thank god it's funny because i was just you know that book famous arrived this past week so i got to plumb through that mm -hmm. and i wrote the forward for the lost roles and wrote a thing about storytellers um but dude thank your enemies and thank your storytellers because if you're not telling your own goddamn story, and not only that, but you telling your story doesn't mean shit. If you go up to a girl in a bar and tell her how awesome you are, and you're trying to hit on that girl, like that's how not far the story. That go over, yeah, that's not the story. That's and, not but the if, story. But if somebody <laughs> if somebody else comes up and goes, "Hey, dude, this guy, you know, yeah. that she respects," and she's like, and, and that's a totally different story, right? So thank your enemies because yep. they bring out the best in you, and thank your storytellers because, I mean, dude, at the end of the day, you know, it's like they say that you know, you die two deaths. The first death is when you actually physically die. And then the second death is when your name is uttered for the last time, because, you know, on the great and cosmic timeline of this globe that we live on, you know, at some point in time, somebody will meet her, somebody, somebody will meet her. That's a Freudian slip. Somebody will mention meet her <laughs> Ninos for the last time. And that's it, dude. And then yeah. that's all she wrote, you know? So to me, my, my passion at that point in time was, all right, well, I want to dive in to try to, tell us, you know, to, to make this webcast live, to try to tell paintball stories, to do like to help, you know, caretake this narrative because this shit's important yeah. to me, man. You know, and we've, and we have this, this ability to, you know, to, to try to transcend, uh, because I've, and it's, you know, paintball to me is a fascinating thing. We are, you know, we're out here playing war, pretending to kill each other. And in the middle of that, you have this crazy, you know, you know, this, all these different narratives and all these different people from all over the world. And it's a fascinating thing. So that's, that was the transition. Yep. So I kind of stopped playing at the height of my career 
essentially like I came off a world cup where, you know, in PGI, they were like, Oh, Maddie played the best on excessive. And I was, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I'm on praise. You can go and look this up, but that was it for me. To me, I was like, in my mind, I had moved on to my next quest, which was because Patrick Spore at the time had been yeah. like, dude, I know you've been doing this TV shows, but we can do this live and on 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 the internet, you know, like, and what do you think about that? And I was like, let's do it. So that's when I, that's again, longer story, um, what I've told on some podcasts, but that's, that's that was beautiful. my passion. And yeah, that's beautiful. You change your passion at the height of your career. Like you changed literally what you were like the way you're going to deliver your passion. <laughs> you did, you went from shooting the gun to talking to the mic and now we have this whole which, show and yeah, uh, which I'm stoked you know, on without you know, that. What, what, what is there? You know, otherwise we're all just still playing and that's great and dandy, but that's the whole point. Like there isn't a right or wrong answer in my life, in your life and the people's listening lives. As long as I just hope, I guess the biggest lesson just do whatever that it is that you want. And hopefully you're well-rounded enough that those are positively like not self-serving things. And you're able to provide other things like you did for your passion to gain uh, to the game. You went from a selfish role and not even selfish in the necessary term, but you are playing to now your hands are off the gun and you're selflessly, uh, you know, speaking our stories into existence and providing a whole nother uh world for us a world that can be spoken heard and seen and without that i mean what the hell what the hell are we doing <laughs> that's what i'm saying dude because it's like if, if a tree doesn't yeah. fall in the woods doesn't make sound no it doesn't make a sound the sound is for vibration for something to hear so you know and as much as i love the creatures of the forest they don't ponder and create you know hyper sentient stories in their minds like and that's again more meter and maddie hold on i gotta plug my computer in yeah but uh yeah. so this we can still have this combo which i forgot to do but um but yeah so it's it's just <laughs> you know it's it's uh it's important man because there are so many things in this world that are you know and people could say that paintball is a giant distraction and and you can't lose yourself in this game but that being said you know it's it's like uh one of my favorite lines from dead poet society is you know when he brings uh all the young kids to come and look at the pictures um, of uh, their, you know, of the people that were at that college or that at that uh, that prep school before. And he's like, yeah, look at all those people. You see all those people smiling, all those young boys smiling in those pictures. Yeah, they're all food for worms. All those people are dead. You know, and he brings up that, you know, gather you rosebuds while you may. Oh, time is still a flying because this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. I have a tattoo on my chest that says for tomorrow we die. You know, like that's their because of some people that did unfortunately die a very tragic death that I saw when I was younger. But, you know, that's always reverberated to me because I've traveled around the world and met all these amazing people. So yeah. Can you get lost in the game of paintball? Sure. You can get lost in a lot of dumber shit though. You can go and play. And I love video <laughs> yeah. games, but you can go play yeah. video games in a dark closet for 12 hours a day. And, and Hey man, if you're really mm -hmm. amazing at it and you can make a shit ton of money doing it and God bless you. But you know, there's a lot better things that, you know, that paintball is, there are a lot of gifts in paintball because the world has society. If it, if you let it will weaken you and paintball strengthens you and you need strength to persevere mm -hmm. in this world that we exist in. So that's why, you know, I, when I see, you know, like what you're doing with Astro or just, you know, all the people that run this game, you know, you got people sitting on the sidelines talking shit and then you got people in the world doing things. I always like to be with the people doing yep. things and I will listen to anyone that talks shit because that's fine. You know, that's part of life. If you can't deal with that, yep. then don't create anything because <laughs> good, good luck, dude. Like you're, no one's going to ever make anything Not, like the greatest. Everyone's an expert greatest, and everyone has yeah, something to say. <laughs> yeah. The greatest, the greatest, great. Like we just had two albums drop recently with, you know, Kanye and Drake and we, everyone's been arguing about what's better. Who gives a shit? Really? I mean, like if we want again, we want to have conversation <clears> about, <throat> over beers Donda. over what's better. <clears throat> Yeah, there, <laughs> sure. That's fine. You can, that can be your opinion. I can disagree with that, but that's okay. Yeah. They're both something that created in mm -hmm. the world that, and, and people, the producers on that, on those gigs all got paid. The writers are all going to get paid forever. Those guys are making shit tons of money. They're just rolling in it. And then they're going to mm -hmm. go on tour and everyone gets to live off that. People are going to have their lives motivated by that soundtrack. So the people that sit over there and hate on one thing or another, like, that's just part of it, dude. You know, like, you oh, I agree with that entirely. Yeah. Anyway, I could, I'm yeah. sorry, I could 
this shows exist for rants, but you got me worked up, Meaner. Sorry. Um, let's, I love let's, it. Let's, 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 let's roll back a little bit. We, yeah, we'll back go back to the, the script, here. but I got you right where I want you. Oh, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so getting back to this, like, dude, you and me could talk for hours, but, uh, but you know, I do want to know, okay. So you were saying you had kind of two different chapters mm -hmm. here, right? So you have then mm -hmm. the lesson and the passion of, you know, kind of finding a more sustainable fuel for your passion, because I feel like this is leading in perfectly then to you then crescendoing up, you know, I'm a sucker for songs that start low and crescendo. And I mean, I feel like all human beings are because again, that's how we're built. We're emotional robots. So then sure enough, you end up back on X factor and it, we did a show with Nita before you can go back and get all kind of the grisly details on all this stuff. But you know, I feel like the emotional part of this and how it ends up resonating for you because dude, you've kept it up. I mean, you continue to play at a level that I feel is elite. I think, I don't even think that's arguable at this point. I feel that that's one of the reasons that X factor is so scary is because they're, you know, the, the whole entire crew is full of elite dudes. Um, I do obviously want to mm. discuss kind of where you're at right now. We had this conversation with Ryan a little bit, but I want to get your take on yeah. it. But if you could kind of take me into that last chapter or the, the not the last chapter, your current chapter of where you're at and uh, and just how you kind of got to fulfill all the promise that we all thought you would have. Because before, you know, we'd see you play some games and be like, there it is, dude. That's the elite meter we all know, but it wasn't there constantly. But I don't feel that you haven't really let off the gas pedal since you got on that team, maybe the first couple events once you kind of worked yourself in. But it's such an interesting role. Because, you know, before you were mm -hmm. kind of either the brutalizer as the one and then you kind of moved in. That, but now you're playing this kind of very, you're almost kind of playing jazz out there, man. You know, you're playing a two, but you're being very creative and you're working within the framework of the team. And, you know, you have guys that play certain roles. So you kind of plug in and can kind of play all of these different spots. And that's kind of like a jazz musician. You know, it's like a, a great guitarist can kind of play. He can riff on a song. He can play rhythm if he needs to. Like I mean, he can kind of get in there and fill whatever hole may be, you know. So, you know, kind of mm -hmm. talk to me about all these lessons, kind of building into the current incarnation and where you're at right now with how well you've been playing with X Factor. Yeah, um, it, it's just uh, I'm super appreciative to Ryan Brand and Alex Martinez. Uh, Ryan told me he, we were going to make this happen when I was going through my uncertainty with where I was with paintball and what I wanted to go do. Um, so major props. And I love Ryan to death. He's, he's my one of my best friends. So he was able to get me back on the team. And, you know, these guys believed in me and they gave me that that breathing room to uh, develop into where I am now. And I definitely don't see a ceiling. I'm working harder than I not that I've not working harder than I've ever had, but I'm working with such purpose and knowledge on what I need to do to like get better and better and better. You know, the plateaus are very small now. Um, just from, yeah, whether it's, I can read the notes like a jazz player or what, but I, I feel like I have a good sense of where I'm at when I'm playing. Um, and then, you know, when things are going down and a breakdown happens, that's, kind of like where i thrive is like in the shuffle of a point if there can be chaos like i can read it well or keep the glue together to prevent the chaos from happening um so i love it i'm having a ton of fun and yeah i mean i don't even know where else to go i'm just i'm just present you know i'm presently playing and i want to win i still know i have so much more to show and to give um not in a proving sense but you know, in a career, you're you're looking at an hourglass. <laughs> how how much sand is in there, and how big the hourglass is is up to the beholder and life. But uh, I definitely see my hourglass still has plenty of sand, but there's so much I want to get out of that. So I'm definitely not happy with where I'm at. We, uh, you know, we're tenth overall. I don't like that. If I'm so good and my teammates are so good, we shouldn't be there. That's sports. But that's also reality. You know, if you can't take that critique as <laughs> as it is, then this isn't for you. Um, so I definitely, ah, man, I'm hungry. I know the rest of us are hungry as well. So that's what's really exciting. Um, I know I derailed, but I think that is what I no, got no, no. for the response. It's, 
No, 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 that's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all fine. There's no right or wrong answer here. But it, yeah, because we do need to kind of take it into where you guys are currently sitting. Um, as it stands right now, you are 10th overall. It's not a place that X Factor is used to being in. I mean, this is a team that is made every Sunday for well over a half decade. Um, but it's just been kind of one of those situations and Ryan and I kind of broke it down a little bit. If we, you know, and I just maybe just get a, maybe a statement or, or two from yeah. you of, of each one of these. So starting with the seventh in, in Florida, um, you know, you guys ended up losing to impact by one in the quarterfinals. You did fight through and beat San Diego dynasty by one in the wild card. Um, and then in the prelims, you know, you beat energy elite by three beat Houston heat by one. Uh, and then you beat up on uprising by five and then you lost to impact. So impact beat you twice at that event. I mean, that's a team you guys have been banging heads against as far as, you know, if you want to be the best team in the world, you have to be able to beat Edmonton impact. So maybe just, you know, a little yep. couple thoughts on where you guys were sitting after that again, you know, not a disastrous tournament. I mean, you won, you know, you're losing mm -hmm. to impact in the, in the prelims and then you beat uh, a dynasty who just came off a world cup win. They still had Tyler at the time. And then you lose by one to impact again in the quarters who, the, who goes on to win the event, you know? So it's, I mean, that is not a disaster by any stretch of the imagination. No, no, it's not a disaster, but the, the issues, the X factor is going through, we can control. And that's, I mean, with any team, there's issues and intangible things that, you feel you should control attitudes and things like that or practices. You know, there's always something. There's always something that people are trying to improve upon. Um, the things that we're going through, we can control. It just takes conscious effort for everyone to be in. And it gets so much easier. And once we get through whatever we're going through, it just gets so much easier. And it, it's so tough because everyone has a a label for a problem and their own solution but to me it's frustrating looking back at things and you throw in covid and then i use that as a big equalizer uh just because bro there's a lot of other things people got going on in the world than our performances but why are our performances our result you know like if you're questioning that and you're blaming on covid that's one thing but if our problems are results of thing people worrying about bigger things, then I can live with that. But we're talking about paintball where our results are now. We gotta handle our shit and fucking perform. That's uh yeah, that's paintball, that's sports. So well, that's my it, statement. Um yeah, I mean it's get your uh, shit together. Paintball is paintball, yeah, you gotta get your shit together, but paintball is paintball is a lot like some of these other sports were just microscopic errors can just magnify and then all of a sudden it just becomes a bad result you know and, and just and it couldn't yeah you know add up and, and yeah it's not just, one you know, big thing that's that's the thing it's not one big thing it's a little thread on a hoodie and then you start pulling at that thread and then another one happens on the other <laughs> and sleeve next, and next now, thing you know the pot you're unraveled <laughs> and then you lost your wallet yeah and your keys aren't there and you're like well i don't even know i now i found the car but i don't know where the keys are and it's going to cost you 150 bucks for locks. It's just one of those things. And it just comes down to that one thread. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. But, it's, it, you know, it's it, and every person has their sports metaphor to kind of pick to, and put it towards paintball. But, you know, I, I do feel that it, even though they are very, very different. But when you look at, say, you know, baseball, you grow up playing baseball. I mean, baseball is a sport where just tiny little things can all of a sudden turn into a slump, which can turn into a really rough time. And, and I wouldn't even say you guys are on a slump. You're yeah. on a yeah, sure. The, as far as your results are concerned, but if we kind of take this to the next event, um, cause I do want to get your thoughts on your bracket and some of these other top teams before I let you go. But, and I got to talk to you about Astra mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's the most important thing we got to yeah. talk about before we sign off. But, um, so just real quick, we'll touch on the last little bit here for the mid Atlantic major, because I do feel the fact that you did lose to infamous in the wild card round by three, you know, it's when you look at your prelims, it's like, Hey, beat energy lead again by two. Um, you, but then you lost to Houston heat by a bunch and that kind of like set the tempo for that, that event where I was like, Oh, wait a second. You know I mean? Yep. You know, Houston Not heat good. was obviously playing with a huge chip on their shoulder at that event because they got knocked out at the first event. But that's why this year in this, you know, the NXL is getting so fascinating because it is so hyper competitive. 
which then even, even goes to what happened at Astro with Blast Camp taking the victory, which I thought was crazy. Yeah. Um, so then, so then you guys beat up on level, and then, uh, and then you beat Infamous, and then you lose to Infamous after beating them in the prelims. You play them again, immediate rematch mm-hmm. the next morning, and they beat you by three. So just last thoughts, real quick, on that tournament before we we get into uh, the Astro Invitational. More of the same. Uh, everything I said for that same first stuff. event, I can apply to this second event. It. Uh, it's frustrating. I'll say that. <laughs> Obviously, it's frustrating. But um, yeah, that's all I got. I don't have any real beautiful thing. I'm in the mud. I'm in the mud myself. I'm trying to get out of the mud. So if someone has an answer <laughs> or better, <laughs> talk to me. Uh, but no, more of the same. Getting the vibes right, getting everyone motivated, getting everything uh to where we're all happy, you know, we're all happy with our practice. We're all happy with our uh, meetings. We're all happy with each other. We're all happy. That solves a lot of what's going on. So you want to know intangibles translating to the play right there. <laughs> You're watching X Factor live it. So, but I feel like the light yeah. is at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> well, it puts you guys then in a situation where you're in, Maybe a bracket of death. I, I don't think so. It really depends on if DMG and AC Dallas shows up. AC Dallas has gotten better. Yep. Uh, you were in with DMG. They did not look good, uh, unfortunately for them in uh, in Sacramento on their home turf. Turf, but then you have aftermath. Yep. You just continue to get better. And Houston Heat again. So you got a redemptive moment mm-hmm. potentially. This is in prelims again. It's it's you guys aftermath. Uh, DMG and AC Dallas. Uh, so just thoughts on that bracket before we start talking about Astra. Yeah, uh, I love that bracket. Houston Heat, they're, uh, you know, they're they're like, we're a brother-like team, brotherhood-like team where we play each other a lot in practice. We obviously face off a lot when it matters at tournaments. So it's always going to be haymakers for both teams. You know, we're always going for wins and scores. Uh, it, when you play that team, it's not so much about the score. It's about the winner of the loss. You know, we've both beaten each other up big. We both lost big to each other. So those matches, they're fun and exciting, but they definitely, they, those type of matches can be uh, as valuable as they are. They can be distractions because like you said, when you see that first loss and it's heat beats X factor, it's everywhere. You know, it's the same vibe for the team than it is for the guys in the booth who see like, Ooh, who's going to show up this week for X factor Um, and vice versa for heat. When we beat them, it's the same thing. They're probably gonna have a rough event. So that match I'm always looking forward to, but you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm open to whatever we bring Uh, these other matches. These are matches. We got to go out and win period. When you go play 10 man, you got to go win on hyperball and you got to win on mounds. You get, you lose, (laughs) you lose in the woods and you lose on the hybrid. That's the same way uh, it is for tournaments. There are teams you have to beat. You have to win. If you don't win, it doesn't even matter. You're fucking up larger than you know that match in particular. So with yeah. AC Dallas and DMG, I know AC Dallas is young. I'm a big fan of this uh, incarnation of AC Dallas. So as much as it is painful for me to say, I got to go beat you guys. I love you guys, but I have to go beat you guys. <laughs> um, and then who was our fourth prelim game? DMG. DMG. Aftermath. Yeah, DMG. Aftermath. Aftermath. There we go. Uh, yeah, so DMG, we, we got the progress report. We got to go out and beat them. Aftermath, they are hunting for that win. You know, they they that is a match where they definitely – uh, everyone wants it, but they definitely are a team who's trying to prove it more in that match. And that's just without explanation. So you got to be prepared when it comes down to them. And you don't want to be in a position where if things did get sideways in the heat game or any of these other games that you're not waiting, you know, you're not guaranteeing the win on that aftermath match because that is a match that they really want too. So don't leave it in their hands. That's uh at least the way I'm approaching these guys. If I'm in a fight, it's like, all right, <laughs> aftermath. I know you guys have a strong right, so I got to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The overhand right is strong with them for sure. Uh, they also got maybe a decent left hook, but 
it just does appear that we gotta we'll see how the rest of that attack if they open up with that right question with them <laughs> yeah but so uh, let's talk okay no, overall let's the talk, let's vibes are Astra. good so let's talk about astra um i'm obviously looking forward to you guys here as always with x factor and see what jerry's gonna do we got the event coming up not this weekend but next uh 17th through the 18th um but so i mean I just think it's first of all, I think you're the perfect type of guy to launch a brand because, you know, again, starting back with, you know, when uh, I first met you sitting on our couch when I was living with Ryan Greenspan and we had such a great conversation. And I was like, bro, this guy seems way. I remember people like, oh, what'd you think of Meter? I'm like, he definitely seems way older than 21 or whatever you were when or 20 or whatever, <laughs> whatever, how old you were when I met you. Um, and yeah. then obviously you've been around in this game. So, you know, I, I I'm just kind of wondering where did the you know, the, 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 the kernel, the, the seed of this come from, how long have you been thinking about this? Mm -hmm. Did it have something to do with the layoff with COVID? You're like, dude, let, we got to bring, I, I want to breathe some life into this sport. You know, obviously I just, because there's a lot of people doing cool stuff right now, you know, with Hormesis and, you know, Dynasty guys, oh, yeah. you know, obviously buying out Bob Long's company. And then even the older, you know, companies have been around, you know, reinvigorating themselves. It's just, it's kind of a, I feel like we are heading into one of those transitionary periods where it's really cool to see a lot of, uh, fresh blood into this scene um, that are trying to make some cool stuff and, and uh, that are, are, I think in my opinion, approaching it from the right way. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. I think the kernel started when I first saw uh, the monkey with a gun or dirt or video, you know, that's when it first started, but to what's where we're at now, <laughs> um, the motivations came from a couple of different places. I know at the end of World Cup last year and probably years past, I was thinking like I always wanted to do a brand. I just didn't really want to do it in paintball. And that's not to say anything negative paintball. It's just I'm passionate about fashion, music, fashion. Hip, pop culture. Yeah, those are like my uh, that's my other passions. So for paintball, it really all came together at the end of the first event this year because um, I saw a hole in the tournament market for pro players. And Rainy and I were sitting uh, driving to Key West from, from the Florida event. We we're just talking about all these different ideas or like what you would want to see and how we could kind of make something different and then also kind of gatekeep it where it's the guys who haven't won a tournament before and guys who are like, at odds at winning a, a pro tournament because in it realistically it's no one's fault so i hope no one takes blame but it's super fucking hard to go win a pro nxl event there's nothing so wrong hard. with that it's like formula one you got 20 drivers there's only three or four that win and that's it and if another guy wins it's because the other guy's wrecked <laughs> so yeah that's badass we just need more you know and it's no one's fault but it's no one's fault and that's why I should no one should take offense and that's why it, there's definitely no nxl rivalry tom and i talk regularly um there just needed to be something uh done by players for players in an honest jest you know that's like a, the easiest way i would explain why the motivations were there we gave 100 percent of the entry fee into the prize um we did free uh you know, post-production that we just released episode two yesterday. So, and with that, it's not a nod or like, you know, stepping on ghost sports toes. We're doing something uh, for an event and we're implementing all these things that people ask NXL and ghost sports to go do, but it, it's a big gamble to do it. Sometimes, you know, they don't have a, They only have five weekends to produce a show and make a show. Uh Oh, did I lose you guys? No, no, no. I'm you're I still got you. Oh, okay. You got me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I got you. I got you. Um, but uh, you know, there needs to be people who can move a little differently without without the the handrails, without the tether, you know. Like we'll just jump in and send it, and then hopefully we can produce a product that benefits everybody that nxl and go sports and then the community can take from and we can get move that way you know that's a more synergistic way of doing things i hate the fact that we have uh you know uh 
animosity thing on the internet. And that's why it's important for this to exist because there's none of that. People are totally. happy. Um, yeah, we got no well, issues. Way, yeah, <laughs> no I, issues at all. Like, I, I talked to, like, I can't remember who it was. And I was like, dude, I don't, yeah, no, I think it's awesome. And first of all, the thing is, is like, there's just as in, okay, Astra can make headbands and Hormesis can make headbands and Sandana can make headbands. And then you all get a headband. You know, like, yeah, there's a, there's only a certain <laughs> yeah. amount of weekends you can, there's only a certain amount of weekends you can do tournaments in. But just like you said, I mean, it's like with the invitational events that they were doing as well, too. It's, it's kind of a similar situation that we went and did some of those yeah. of. And it was like, yeah, man, because at the end of the day, yeah, you're right. I, I do think that we are living in an era where there are, you're right, only a certain amount of teams mostly can win tournaments. It's more than two or three. Um Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Impact, the Russians, Infamous, Houston Heat, San Diego Dynasty, you know, it's been a while for damage, but X Factor. So, I mean, there's a decent amount of teams and then there's these other teams. It's a little bit of a longer combo as far as who has the possibility to win tournaments. But, you know, hell, Thunder's yeah. ranked fifth right now. But that being said, oh, you're right, dude. It's a it's a very small amount of people that can be at that echelon. But so I, I just to me, it's not a zero sum game. Never, paintball has never really been a zero sum game. And I think that the more that it gets kind of looked at in that light it's like okay dude you can have uh, astra and they can get a dollar and hormesis can get a dollar and you know sandana can get a dollar and by having you guys all thrive in that landscape at the same time it raises a rising tide raises all boats and that's kind of how i look at this entire situation how i've always Absolutely. looked at this situation which is why i've worked for literally everybody you know, I've worked for the original MPPL back in the day. I've worked for all the documentary filmmakers, every incarnation of the PSP, every incarnation of the NXL. Like, to me, it's just about who who's around that. It's like a paintball team, man. It's like who's around that can help rise the tide. Can you who's who, who's down to rise yeah. the tide? Oh, you are. You are. You are. All right. Let's do let's let's do this. You know, like that's. And so the fact hey, if we're, that if we're a paintball know, team. We're running the snake, baby. You know, I'm yeah. I'm your snake guy, <laughs> and, and you're my love you're it. the you're in the back. You're the support. You're the you, you're I holding the whole it. thing together. It. So no, it's, I, it's I great. I agree I'm, more. Yeah, and that's and that's why I wanted to get you on the show and talk about it because I would just you know hear too much bullshit where I'm just like, no nah, man, like I we support what you guys are doing. And then when I talked to Tom, Tom was like, you know, like you said, you talk to Tom on a regular basis. He's like, dude. I, he's i would have changed the date on the whole thing and he was basically supportive you know he had said i don't know what he no, told yeah, you about it but totally yeah yeah so no maybe no you could, we know you could talk to uh, maybe you could talk a little all. bit about that um yeah they're the biggest takeaway is nxl was not informed with who was doing it what it was uh i think the only kernels of information that they got was when and where and that happened the same week of, uh, you know, their announcement of their event, which was already in works with uh, New York Extreme. So this was already that was already going down. And there's no like cookie cutter way to really or like, you know, politically correct way to go about it. But I wanted to be secretive for purpose. I didn't want anyone to mess up my weekend. I saw the NXL weekend mm -hmm. as a good weekend because on paper it's a D2 minor event. It's not a pro open event. <laughs> so that was like the perfect weekend to do it for everyone's schedules. And then there's just a miscommunication and unfortunately that's, you know, that sucks. But uh, to think that it was an intentional um, jab or anything other than that, that's just wrong. It's just, that's just not what happened. I know that to be true <laughs> so as long as uh that's settled and there's no animosity between nxl and myself astra associates we there's no issue and we know we knew that going into it so any of the hearsay of you know the nxl is trying to gatekeep pro you know tournament paintball that's just not the case um but there's fault on both ends you know, my my guerrilla tactics of not posting any information for protecting what I wanted to get done. And, you know, that's just how that broke down. But there's no uh, animosity whatsoever. And whatever it ended up just being more fodder for people to consume content and get riled up about some shit anyway. So who cares <laughs> at the end of the day, it's not even really that yeah. big of a and deal. That, I that, mean, your event went off. That's it was cool. Big, Everyone seemed to really dig it. That's a it. big thing too.
Yeah. Um, a lot of people also lose sight of like just more things for paintball is good for paintball. Um, and that's like the whole, yeah. you know, if there could be a mission statement, that is the mission statement of Astra is, you know, it's more of a personal brand and then also idea vessel. So Maddie, you and I, we're drinking beers, we're doing whatever. We start talking about something crazy, some crazy ideas, some six man rotating bunker format, $60,000 prize. Um, you know, there's not many places where this thing can go exist. So as Astra, we can do that. You know, th hey, this is Maddie's crazy yeah. idea that he had that he, he wants to see be done. Well, okay. How do we finance it? Well, um, well, Astra as a brand, we're selling merch, we're selling this, we're selling that. We have a lot of big things in the works for our first collection that I don't really want to reveal. Um, all I will say is it's taking longer just because of all the shipping nonsense, but, <laughs> uh, that's what Astra is about. It's, it's, it's the paintball purest, uh, brand in a way because that's that's all we're trying to do is just get more paintball out there um and it's easier to do that than meter and maddie and darren with some beers let's put a, a brand in front of it put a brand in front of it people react to it differently look what we just did as like a um, experimental piece with one event the disruption and things we caused and not disruption in in the chaos manner i just mean like look at the opinions that arose the opinions that arose obviously show that there is like desire and uh, want and the desire and want should come from you. It should come from you listening. It should be come from everyone. And you should take that as a call to action and go do something for your uh, like of your own for the community. That's like the biggest message or takeaway that I am passionate about. If you think you can do it better than anyone, then go do it. We've been on this paintball topic and board shit for fucking a decade i see a lot of talk see a lot of troll a decade shit. i don't see anyone doing way it. longer than yeah. a decade brother. Well, way longer than a, a decade. lifetime a lifetime a lifetime yeah. but uh you know you, you see the same names you see these same names blah 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 blah, blah. why won't this blah, blah 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 and it's like bro it wasn't the biggest task in the world to go do this you know it took full time it took money but this wasn't things that uh you know, I couldn't go do. I just, I just started moving my feet, started moving my mouth, started moving my, uh, my hands, and we got the result. I got some other friends who were down to move their feet and mouth and hands, and then that's what happened through friendship and through a, a genuine like mission. We got the event that we did, and that's like as pure as it can get. Where we go from there, woof, it takes a lot more, and that's where it gets interesting. And as far as other events, I definitely want to do one-off events there will not be a league there won't be anything like that we're fluid we're too fluid for any of that so it's uh it's let's let's get some good ideas out there into the ether and let's make them reality we'll try things we'll fail we'll try some different things we'll fail we'll do something one will work and that's i'm about that if i'm gonna be in paintball i want it to be that way then um you know well, we came, we did this and we didn't like that. We didn't like the prize here. We didn't, Jesus, man, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I just love it, man. It's like, I bring it up all the time. Cause it's just like, Hey, go Google the man in the arena, you know, from uh, Theodore Roosevelt. It's uh, you know, I, I always tip my yeah. hat uh, even though my bald head's not wearing them currently. I don't have one around, but I will tip my hat to you meter because you uh, stepped into the arena and made something and, and it, you know, and it takes mm -hmm. a special creature to do that. Uh, it doesn't surprise me though that you did. And yeah, I just, you know, like you said, I mean, more paintball is a good thing. So, you know, it, I think that, yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 it was a great experience. I mean, to the fact that blast camp won it is epic. Yeah. Um, it just kind of, it, it's a big, you know, I'm always talking about these divisional teams that are coming up. We go do these divisional events that same weekend we were out at Dave Baines's field and you see these next, the next coming, right? Because, you know, it's like George St. Pierre, famous mixed martial artist, you know, when, when he was asked like, Oh, you know, well, are the guys now as good as you were back in the day? And he had a beautiful quote and he's like, I don't care what sport you play, but the new athletes and the people that are coming up now, they're better than we were back in the day, but that's a good thing. That's progression. That means you laid a solid foundation mm -hmm. that somebody could learn from consume it, and then go and make it better. That's 
that's human life, man. That's how we all get to exist in air conditioned domiciles now. And we're not out here, you know, trying to club, uh, you know, some sort of creature with, with like a stick uh, and then, and then eat it raw. Yeah. You know I mean? That's literally how we all got here. So the fact that, that that's just reality, you either accept that as the way things are and continue to swim in that, you know, that fertile ground and, and, and try take to it like a champ too. Things forward. Yeah. Take it like a champ. Let these give these guys opportunity to to be better. You know, we cannot gatekeep the the talent and let you know. I love Ryan. Ryan Greenspan's one of my all time good friends, great friends. But I cannot continue to let Ryan Greenspan win paintball championships more and more and more and more. <laughs> it's not good for me. And I and there needs to be people who feel the same way about me. The only difference is I want to. I want to go, I got, I got to take Ryan off his throne before I can do anything else, but at least we can do something where these other guys can shine and blast camp winning this tournament. I mean that the whole weekend was special, no matter who won the whole, who, no, no matter who walked away, it was an incredible, genuine, really rare weekend of, uh, not really rare, but it's just one of those weekends. It's one of those weekends of paintball where you, or the paintball guy, God shine down and they bless us. So that was like, major nod to the paintball gods blast camp though coming out and being the semi-pro team to beat all these pro teams and be the outlier in the entire thing that i wanted you know that we all the the group wanted to see happen before our eyes was like spectacular major fan of those guys was before the win after the win now i'm like oh man what did we create <laughs> we just funded this monster but uh <laughs> no super happy super happy yeah no it's it's great man i just i'm really happy that you guys stepped up and you did this i know it was it's really hard to actually create things in the world and get things accomplished and i know it, mm -hmm. you know it's, it's the fact that you did and stepped it up took it on the chin and you guys actually created something it's super cool the fact that blast camp one is a really awesome thing just i just feel that it goes to show you because I've been preaching this as much as I can. I do feel we are heading into a world where things are getting hyper competitive. I mean, there are a lot of teams that have a chance to be, you know, these oh, yeah. to be better, to be to 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 beat some of these top teams. And it's not just going to be, you know, two or three teams winning every single event. Are they going to win the majority of events? Probably, but I don't think they're going to win them all. So that's why I'm stoked to see what happens here at this next event. Um, but yeah, the the been the one big question because people kept asking me about it was. You know, and I know you said you've got to keep some stuff under wraps, but what is next for mm -hmm. Astra? You know, I mean, what when is the drop happening? What type of stuff? What's currently available? Yeah. You know, give me some of that info before we so, sign So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So our website is astra.af, um, and we're going to be making a bunch of apparel, a lot of uh, shorts, pants, uh, like sweatpants, um, dry fits, jackets, hats, a lot of things that you just don't see uh, or you see at paintball fields, but it's never at the field when you need the, you know, like it's a rainy, rainy event. Okay. Well, I wish I had a rain jacket. That was like a paintball rain jacket. That was kind of cool that I could wear out. So we're going to be like kind of that in between, um, in between play specialty. That's where I really want to hit for the first collection. At least I want to own that airport outfit. I want to own the shorts after the you play, add a little fashion nista into our world of xls nautical stars <laughs> i want to give a little uh currency um but uh that's what we're working on for now i have bigger aspirations absolutely but this is kind of a one-man pocketbook <laughs> and so uh i don't have a ton of resources to collect on um and i'm learning it i'm figuring it out myself so if you're supporting astra know that you're supporting me to try and create and get better products out there for you. Which is why yeah. I love this kind of yeah. renaissance of paintball stuff. You know, it's like, you know, the, every time I see someone like yourself come out, I mean, even if New York extreme selling their, like their rainbow unicorn jerseys, I'm like, good, you know, make that money for the team, man. You Absolutely. know, like that'll help, help them yeah. be around for longer. You know, it's like, I remember when dynasty got hooked up with HK and, you know, because they dynasty needed that. Now they're starting their own stuff. And like it just, you know, and, but they're still obviously working with HK. It makes a great products so and just play with some golf with Josh the other day. I just, I love this, this kind of, it's all ground up before, you know, after there was room, book, there's room for it. There's, 
there's room. It's not a zero sum game, man. You can own, like I said, you can, you can yeah. own this gun. You can own that gun. Obviously there, those are, that's an expensive piece, but you can own this headband. You can own that headband. You can play this tournament. You can play that tournament, man. It's, there is room still here for this. And just want to kind of preach that gospel as much as possible because Jesus Christ, dude, everyone acts like paintball is this zero sum game. If you get a dollar, he doesn't get a dollar. And that is not the case. So that one, that's not to be the like case. a closing. That is not the case. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm happy. And again, it does go to you, you know, it's like, it's, it's about, you know, that's what I'm saying. It goes to meter Nino's trying to make something happen in this world. He's been around this game for a long time. I've always been impressed with everything you've done, brother. So I, I'm really happy that you are doing this and I wish you the best of luck. Um, thank you so much well, for joining you. me. I really appreciate it. Anyone else you want to thank real quick before we sign off or anything you want to, you know, guide people to um, or pump up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I have to thank all my teammates. Um, uh, Alex Martinez, of course. Uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. Uh, thank, thank you to Planet Eclipse, uh, JT, all of our sponsors that support us do this. And uh, I would direct you to Astro.AF. It's just we only have black headbands available, so I know that's not exciting for everybody. But we will have a new collection soon. I'm sorry. Check out the new episode two of uh, the Astro Invitational on Yosh uh, Designs YouTube channel. And uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, Maddie and Darren. Dude, no, no, no problem, man. Hey, I'll tell you what. I'm sure that the the black Astra uh, edition one headbands will probably be worth some money in three years. So go pick those up. Thank you guys so much for joining SingleSports.com. Yeah. Meter, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, man. I love what you're doing. Best of luck to you and the boys on thank X Factor. You. The event's gonna be going down here next weekend. I'm excited for that. Uh, yeah, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.